This is Live from the Table, the official podcast of the world-famous Comedy Cellar, coming at you on Sirius XM 99 Raw Dog, and available as a podcast. Dan Natterman here, along with Periel Ashenbrand. How are you, Periel? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Dan. How are you? I'm all right. Comedy Club owner, proprietor, Noam Dorman is not here. I think he's in Italy, something like that. He's on, he's on vacation. I believe he's... Incorrect. No, where is he? It's his wedding anniversary. Oh, okay. It's his wedding anniversary. But I think he's going to Italy. He is going to Italy. All right, but he's not in Italy. In any case, it's his wedding anniversary, and so he is not here, but we're here, so uh, regular listeners will know that that probably means a conversation more centered on comedy than on, for example, uh, you know, uh, the latest Supreme Court ruling or, um, you know, some, some arcane point of law. Um, <laughs> So it is, as Nicole described, this podcast sort of a pendulum that swings back and forth between those two worlds. But in any case, we have Jay Jordan coming a little bit later uh, to join us. Uh, I taped my special, which has yet been named. We haven't. Uh, regular listeners will know that we were trying to decide a name for my special, but uh, Perry also thought a little bit bananas was a good name, uh, which I didn't rule out. I thought of some other names like um, what else did I think of? Obsaggerations. Like observations and exaggerations was one of the things I had thought about. I um, had some other ideas. Nothing that I'm in love with so far. I'm not sure when exactly I have to come up with a name for it, but um, but I guess I will at some point. Anyway, I taped that last week. Okay, I would like to hear about that. I would also like to clarify that I said that I thought a little bit bananas was a brilliant Okay, title. you thought it was brilliant. Uh, brilliant, is the, brilliant is a word that I generally reserve for... Things like, you know, Isaac Newton, and <laughs> I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe that's too high a standard for brilliant, but certainly that no, you told w- me your name wouldn't qualify you said as brilliant, but I did think it was a fine name. I have you, no problem with it. Said, I think it was pretty good. Yeah. You said you had a good idea. Isaac Newton was brilliant. That was what you said. Okay, him. well, I, I, I reiterate that. Um, uh, but it, look, maybe, again, Isaac Newton might be too high a standard for brilliance, so perhaps... Insofar as titles go, you know, uh, it's we, a great title. Can you acknowledge that? Or what makes a I, great title? I think title? Gone with the Wind is a great title. It's, it also happens to be my favorite novel, but I think it's a great title. I didn't know that. That's your favorite novel? It so happens it is. Yes, it's very politically incorrect to say so in this day and age because it does sort of soft pedal slavery, and that's true, it does. Um, it is not without its flaws, but it is, uh, despite that, my favorite novel uh, because it really puts you, uh, you know, in that time period. You almost feel as though you've been hanging out in the 1860s for several weeks. I mean, it's a long book, so it took took a while to read. But I'm gonna actually read it twice. Really? Yeah, I ten years apart. After I forgot it, you got to give a book a few years to forget it, and sure. then you can reread it, and then it can have a similar impact to the first time I, you read it. I don't know that I've read Gone with the Wind. Well, you first of all, uh, then you haven't because it's not a book. I mean. It would take a lot of time. Like, you'd remember reading it. It's 1,200 pages. It's not something I don't think that you can forget. Yeah, that's, forget. yeah, no, okay, fair enough. It's not something that, like, you read in high school. No, it's not something you read over the weekend that you might have forgot. I mean, this book would take you, you know, you better clear out the, the calendar for a while. You're gonna read. <laughs> for how long? How long did it take you? Oh, I don't know. Probably a, a month, but it depends how many hours a day you're going to read. Is know? it is it? I, mean, I guess you could read it in a week if you really cranked it all, all day. I mean, it sounds kind of brutal, to be honest. No, I enjoyed every every line, every page. There was not a page that I was, you know, was not uh, interested in, in it. But I, I'm interested in that period of time in history, so that's like you're halfway there already. Uh, somebody suggested to me War and Peace, and I was like, well, yeah, but I don't really care about Russia and the Napoleonic Wars mm. or whatever whatever it is. So it's like, even if it's brilliant, it's you're probably not going to, because I just right away don't really care about that. But era. there are things that you, I mean, like, I read Moby Dick and really was surprised at how much I liked it because I didn't really think I cared about any of those things. Okay, um, well, that's fair. But just generally, if I'm not, I did read Moby Dick as well, and I, I, I liked it. I didn't love it. But um, I was trying generally, to... if the topic is interesting to me, I'm halfway there. Right. I... And if the topic is uninteresting, then it's not likely to win me over. But okay. I suppose it fair can enough. happen. You know. um, I read Moby Dick to impress a boy. Well, you could have read the cliff notes. I mean. No, I think there was something about like walking around with the book, like. Okay. In well, here. I don't know that any boy's impressed by a, a literate woman, um, <laughs> especially at whatever. At what age were you? I was in my twenties. I was. Well, probably, I, you know, he's probably just looking at your tits. I mean, unfortunately. <laughs> 
Well, know. he he was um, he was a Melville scholar. Yeah, I mean, but he was Melville scholars still look at tits, you know. Yeah, and well, I, fair I, enough. And I think I was pretty hot. My, my guess is is it that wasn't going to move the needle one way or the other. <laughs> But you know, but uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but that would be my guess. Um, okay, let's talk about the special. How was it? It was, you know, if you want you want the truth. It was good, not great. The, the the audience, but they can sweeten it in 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 the editing room. But the audience wasn't an explosive like we have here at the Comedy Cellar most nights. Okay, it was good. How long did you do? I did about forty five. I'm not sure that I trust your tape. No, everybody in the audience said this was great because I, my standards are a comedy seller at like the best night of the week level explosion. And for a special, you want that. Yeah. You know, and it does affect your rhythm. It, it does, you end up doing more jokes because more laughter is less jokes, less laughter is more jokes. You just, the, the time it takes to laugh. So there's probably about. Over a period of 45 minutes, it's probably, like, if, if it was, like, an explosive audience, I probably would have done, that same amount of jokes would have probably taken five to ten minutes longer. Okay. Which they could probably also do in in post-production. They could probably also expand that and put in laughs and do that. But, um, yeah, so that, so that's what it was. And it, how did you feel? The, the, were the you... jokes were, the jokes are my jokes. So they're, and, but, you know, when... The more the laughter, the more they're laughing, the more it just you can't help it. You're going to feel better. It's going to come off better. There's just no way around that. I guess you can fake it, but I can't fake it. So, you know, it, it would have been better had it been just an explosive crowd from mm -hmm. beginning to end. It wasn't. Um, were I, were this a special I was producing myself, I'd say, well, maybe let's, I would have done two shows, mm -hmm. you know, but they didn't. So, um, you know, that's what it was. I, th you know, it, those are my, they're my jokes. So. You know, I think they're good jokes, and I guess Josh Jordan is here. I just heard the bell ring. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll see what they do with it. They're going to try to sell it to streaming. I don't know. Wh whatever they're going to try to whatever do Whatever they it. do. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. I'm very proud of you. I hope you're proud of yourself. Well, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Look, I've been doing this a long time for you, so things that to you are impressive just are not But you haven't taped a special. Well, I did a Comedy Central special years ago, but, yeah, you know. Where? I want to I mean, see like it. Years ago, you could not. I don't even know if it even exists anymore. On, I mean, it. this was like so long ago that it was like before streaming and shit like that. So I don't know if you can find it anywhere. Okay. It's called Comedy Central Presents, and it may well be how, just you how cannot long? find it. It was a half hour. They were, at that, Comedy Central was giving out a string of half hours at that time. What so. is that called? Comedy Central Presents. And oh, so did yours like, didn't have uh, a title. No, no. They just did a whole season or two or three seasons worth of these. And they, I mean, I don't I've know how many people did it. I've seen some of them. I have. Um, I, I have. I think like. <gasps> Hello, Jay Jordan. Jay Jordan is with us. Um, how do you do, Jay? Are, are you making your debut with us? Yes. Or have you, this is his debut on, we call this, this is live from the table. You just have a seat. It's all you. Hi. How do you do, Jay? I'm doing really well. Fine, thank. I mean, uh, good to hear. It's very warm today. It's warm in here, and it's warm outside. No, outside. Yeah. It snuck up on me. Um, so we were just talking about. I just taped this. Spe this company is doing these specials um, that they're doing when they're going to try to sell it on to streaming or whatever. So I just taped it last week. How'd it go? As I was telling Pearl, it went fine, but it wasn't like you know, you, you know, at the Village Underground when it's like every every joke's an explosion, yeah, yeah, a nuclear yeah. detonation. It yeah. wasn't that. We're spoiled. I mean, VU downstairs, truly, you can go. Oh my God, shut up! That was a setup. Stop it. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it can fuck up your rhythm. It, and because they're so hot, sometimes you'd be like, the grease is too hot. I need <laughs> a little bit of silence so that you enjoy the big pops. But I love coming back particularly from like a casino gig where sometimes audiences are a bit slower to respond to material that gears are kind of turning. They're drunk. They're there to smoke inside. They're there to gamble. So going from a show with like a kind of okay response back to the VU, oh, it feels so good. It feels so affirming as a comic. You're like, oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, I'm at the point where I don't let sets that are not phenomenal change how I feel about my, my yeah, act. Yeah, but it feels good, right? Yeah, um, it, I would say this. It, for a special, I want it to be explosive. Yes. As far as how it makes me feel, it doesn't really matter okay. to me. I'm at the point now where uh, <laughs> I just know my jokes are with, you know, I, I mean, with the, sometimes an audience is too, 
effusive or too, you know, explosive. And I'm like, well, but any, you know, I don't know that this really says anything. Ooh, that is because, a good Because, you know, ma maybe anybody could get these kinds of yeah. so but, uh, but for a special, of course, I want that. But for my own internal... Well, you're not great at taking compliments. No, no, never have been. <laughs> <laughs> never have been. Uh, and Edmund, you're very funny. Let's see if you can you, take Jay. this one. Yes. There you go. Thank you, Jay. Ish, though. <laughs> he, he, it's not. Okay, can we, can we give Jay a proper Jay, introduction? Jay, yeah, well, you can do it because you didn't say, Jay is a regular here at the Comedy Cellar. Uh, Which, by the way, just hearing you say that or anyone say that still feels so surreal and fun and I love that. Okay, well, I envy you your, your, <laughs> your enthusiasm. Um, yeah, I guess I'm a little jaded. A um, little? Oh, maybe more than a little. But, um, but happy, also happy Pride Month. Thank it you. It is Pride Month, and, um, you know, you are, uh, well, we all celebrate Pride. Two more days where you're allowed to be gay, then we send you back. We no, send you back send you into back. the you're closet. Always, always welcome here. Um, it, uh, was, it wasn't always the case that people were so, you know, able to... Um, be who they are. Yeah, very true. I have a. Yes. For, I like to do these bios. For okay, the go audience. ahead. You can Jade do them. Jordan originally is is a comedian, writer, and actor originally from Mississippi. True, true. Regularly performs comedy all over the country, and he's currently a staff writer for Apple TV's The Problem with John Stewart. Yes. Oh, I on, didn't know. That. On strike. What, what's the problem with John's? What's that about? Oh, so uh, current topics. I mean. It's sort of a continuation of the work that John did mm -hmm. in all of his previous works, but he gets to even be more specific. He gets to go laser focused on a specific issue for one episode. Sometimes with The Daily Show, there'd be so much shit that he had to cover mm -hmm. Monday through Thursday that if he really wanted to hone in on something, he would be like, oh, I have to have like an episode just for this. So when he had the 9-11 first responders bill, when he had them on the episode for The Daily Show, and he was really able to talk about how would he make sure that the people who care for us and who provide us with all these services, make sure that the government is coming through with their promise to make sure they're provided with services, especially when people got tons of different diseases, particularly cancer, from 9-11 uh, smoke inhalation. And so he was like, oh, that's kind of what I want to do with this next show. So it's very topic-based, so each episode is just one topic. A and problem. A problem. What What about the problem? What about I wasn't finished with the bio, but that's Oh, good. Oh, yeah, come on. No. Enough with the bio. <laughs> no, keep no, going. A, I want to know what else is in she there. She likes super long bios. <laughs> well, Jay's I mean, if it makes you happy, fine, but a, an intro should be short and sweet. <laughs> Jay has performed on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon twice and has also been seen on The Late Late Show with James Corden, Comedy Central featuring The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and HBO's High Maintenance. Yeah, I was a slut on High Maintenance. I was a whore, Dan. Spe speaking of um, cancer-causing uh, particulates, <laughs> I I'm wondering about that Canadian ash cloud. Ooh. And, oh. those and those motherfuckers got the nerve to come here. We, we will Every night know. I see Canadians in the audience showing up like nothing happened. We won't know. And now Chicago has terrible air today. Why, not because of the Canadians. I don't know why, but there's a huge air quality yeah. uh, problem in the Midwest, particularly Chicago and I think some parts of Ohio right now. Oh, yeah, that's not, but that's not to do with... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I, I read that the city was supposed to be really bad today, but it seems okay. I know that generally you don't like it when I start trying to take the controls here, but I do think... As a general matter. As a general rule. I do <laughs> think, though, that we have Jay, who has, in my opinion, a particularly brilliant and linguistically inclined mind, and it might be interesting to discuss titles with him a little bit. You might want to take for my advantage. Style. Uh, I don't know. Well, we can discuss Ooh. it. We, we have, this is a topic that's sort of well-worn, but I suppose... Well, we but we, we, we have no resolution... My, so I taped this special, as I had mentioned, and so I don't have a name for it yet. So um, without telling you, without prejudicing you by telling you who came up with what, okay. some of the names we're considering are A Little Bit Bananas, which is a reference to my One banana joke, joke yes. and also a reference to me being a little bit bananas. All right. Another possibility I thought of, ooh, I mean somebody thought of, was... Uh, <laughs> Come on! Uh, Very bad poker uh, player. No, I really was a slip. I didn't mean to do that. Obsaggerations, like observations and exaggerations. Okay. Um, wait, let me... I have... I think... No, I, I don't have... I deleted it because I delete shit. Um, sort of an OCD thing where I delete everything, so I don't have it on my phone, the titles. That, yeah. Um, the one with the asterisk? Yeah, that. but that... 
I did one was like um, I forgot it was like when I used the aster like I said um, you know a little bit runny a little bit runny aster is funny oh you remembered it okay. like like as a reference to people correcting their text messages mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, when Although I Dan said won't that, be there to explain the title nobody the got it <laughs> when I said it so I assume nobody will get it. If that's the name well, of the Well, visually uh, they would see it so they wouldn't have to it wouldn't have to be explained. Right. So that that would work way more efficiently visually. Yeah. I'm inclined to the observation is exaggeration combination. Uh, that's how you are. So okay, well. Periel, of course, likes her suggestion, uh, a little bit bananas, which I, I don't think is bad at all. I, think I it's like good. a little bit bananas, yeah. but I love the banana joke so much that it could be that joke could then are you, would you name it gym teacher? You know what I mean? Like I know I Well, love but that because joke a little so bit bananas could doesn't necessarily have to reference that. Got it's it. just sort of a general notion. And I think it's it so a bonus happens, that it It's a bonus that it re- you know, and again, I, I, I give Perry Peri- Peri- full credit. I'm I don't think it's bad at all. Credit here. No, I'm really you're gonna not. get it whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh a little if for me, uh Observation. Uh, what say uh, the uh, observation? Uh, exaggerations. Exaggerations. That's fun to say. Exaggerations. You can't even say it. Obsagerations. Doesn't matter. Exaggerations. Ha- I say. I, let me get. He one says more. it well enough. And if if everybody stumbles over it, it could be a thing. You know. Exaggerations. Then a little bit bananas. Interesting. Okay. Those are that's that's one A and one B in in my opinion. Okay. I take back what I one said about how B. smart Jay is. <laughs> I I I am uh, I, I'm actually all on board with Jay's <laughs> brilliance. And now Dan's like, read more of the bio. There's a smart and you know, out of Mississippi, you don't see it coming because Mississippi <laughs> has that reputation. I mean, I, you I you may be the only person I know personally from Mississippi. Yeah, I, a lot. Of I don't think I know that. a damn a damn soul from Mississippi. Well, a lot of Mississippians, particularly a lot of Southerners now, if they move to a larger metro area, they'll move to Atlanta or they'll move to Houston. Or Dallas or New Orleans. So, like, because the South has so many hubs where you can kind of just lily pad there if you want to go to the big city. New York is way too big of a big city and way too far for a lot of Southerners to think, oh, I'm still, I want to completely uproot my mm-hmm. existence. Mm. So, usually people go to Atlanta or they go to Houston, Dallas, or New Orleans. You it, must have known pretty early in your life that you wanted to leave Mississippi? Like, that's a plan you start putting in place. No, it's, Periel, and then you guys are going to laugh. New York was on the bottom of my list of places I thought I was going to end up. I, the The soft list when I got done with school was Los Angeles, Atlanta, Space, Chicago, New York. And then wow. I ended up coming to New York twice, and I liked parts of it but I was still wasn't sold because I was seeing like I was staying with a friend in like this tiny railroad apartment in Hell's Kitchen when I did my like showcase and so after I did that I had like a theatrical agent reach out and it was truly just sort of like me saying well Jay if you go to New York and you don't like it you can always leave and nothing will happen you can always go back to Mississippi Stay a couple months, save some money, move to Atlanta. Like, it it won't be the biggest deal in the world. So I just moved up here two days after my mom's birthday in 2015. Wow. Well, I mean, as a, as a comic, the, the obvious choices are New York or L.A. Although, yeah. I mean, you know, there's there, there's a school of thought that says, well, start in a smaller market and... Get yeah, great. A, a, and then, you know, come to New York at some point when, when you can make a a good first impression because you're experienced. So yeah. I, I don't... I never did that, but that's a school of thought. Another school of thought is, well, New York and L.A. have just more places to get on stage. So uh, and you'll be competing with, you know, arguably the best. I don't know. And so, (laughs) you know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but people this is what people this is the school of thought. Come to the place where the best people are and, and put yourself in that mix. So those are the two schools of thought. I don't know which school of thought. You, you know, you come down on, or one way or the other, maybe you haven't thought of. I'm definitely in the school of thought that iron sharpens iron, and I think that the amount of reps you get in New York, when I first moved here, you move here, and you, this is 2015, so you open up free mics, and in 2015, 2016, 2017, there were so many chances to get up, and I mean, truly, in the most kind of, like, traditional way, like, 
Go to a mic. Do well at a mic. Go back to the mic. Do well at the mic. Do that for a mic a, being an open mic. As no, we used, to, as we used to call it back in the Stone Age. Yeah, an open mic. Then get on a produced bar show. Do well on the bar show. Do that a couple times. Maybe do a produced show at a club. Then you kind of loop that for a while, and then maybe you get an audition to do checks at a club, or maybe you win a competition that was with the club. So I just really sort of like took that process and the longer that it took the more I enjoyed like getting reps it was never like oh I gotta like move to like doing a bunch of time fast it was like oh okay they like this five minutes yes oh oh shit they like this five minutes oh yes okay oh okay holy shit oh that guy knows who I am okay I'm gonna do his bar show oh I'll do a bar show in Queens okay I'll do a show in Staten Island okay so I just truly said yes to so many shows. Well, I, you know, um, <clears throat> our own Perry L is not just a uh, not just a radio personality or a podcast personality. She's also in that beginning. St- I mean, I don't think it's fair to say I don't want to insult you, but you're not in relatively me. beginning stage of comedy, and you, yeah. so you are exactly in the position that I was discussing. Yeah. You know, so do you feel that? Me- I mean, you, you, your family's here, so you have no choice. You have a husband and a child i mean i could get that, rid you, of that. you have roots here in New York. <laughs> but do you think were that not the case and you were free to go w- wherever you wish to go uh for your comedy your stand-up where do you think you would like to be i like iron sharpens iron i also think that's a good title for something not, um not not the special but something not your special no no it doesn't make any sense with my spec right. but i'm saying it could be a title for something. it's a good title um <laughs> I mean, I think that I am in a unique position because I am, you know, I'm a mom and I guess that doesn't inherently mean that you can't go on the road, but it kind of like that. Well, it means you're not likely to be to pack up and move somewhere. But it also means that I'm not going to spend most of my time running around on the road. Although people do. Yes, people People do. do. And I give those people a lot of credit. I think it's incredibly difficult. I mean, I know a lot and I'm friends with a lot of, a lot of female comics who have kids and who, who were further along in their career. I didn't start doing stand up until I already had a kid. So it was a little bit different, Um, but it's difficult. So I do feel very lucky. I also feel lucky um, to just be in the room, to be honest. Because I feel like um, to just be around it and it's, y- y- yes, to be around the best. You want to be around the best. If you want to be great, you want to the standards to be as high as they can possibly be. I would also say that the, the transportation system in New York and the kind of infrastructure for stand-up does make it easier to kind of go completely insane with the number of shows you can do whereas in LA there are some true geographical limitations on how far and how many places you can be at once not just with cars but also with parking and just with the amount of spaces that are letting people do open mics the the comedy store I know I I don't go to LA very often and I've never performed at the comedy store but as I understand it they have Several rooms, right? It's kind of like here. They yeah, we. They, uh, I've never done the store. I have tons of. I have tons of friends who work at the store, who go to mics at the store, who are associated with the comedy store in some regard. But we have four rooms here now. I think they have three rooms. They have three rooms. I. I don't. You're asking me. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. I've, I've never been. But I think it's like here. Like here, a comic can come and do a spot. There's four showrooms, so you can theoretically, and there's several shows in each showroom a night, so you could theoretically do like five, six, seven sets here. Now, Mm -hmm. most people don't. Uh, It just depends on how many SD the booker wishes to give you. But theoretically, you can do... There are people that do four or five, certainly. Yeah, but I'm not even talking about at this level. I'm just talking about being able to do, in in the earlier stages of a career, being able to do three mics in one day and know that you can get to all of those places Mm -hmm. without having to worry about parking at all. And that's like on a Wednesday, not even a Friday or a Saturday. Or even not mics, right? Like you can go pop from Brooklyn to the city to Queens to whatever and do three shows. Yes. Just real quickly, uh, Nicole? Nicole, yes. you, yeah, is this interesting to you? And <laughs> so, because she's like, I look, I look to her as sort of the everyman. And uh, and where would you like us to go with this discussion? I may or may not follow your advice, but I'm, I'm interested. I think in she your, fell asleep. Nicole, <laughs> well, yeah. I've never, I've never been 
to LA. I've never been to the store. Like I'm so curious about the differences between like that and here and what the audience vibe is like, like how that is different from the seller. Yeah, see, I don't perform a lot in L.A. I, Sounds like I mean, the, one, the couple of times I've been in L.A., I did very, very... I was at the, com- the uh, Laugh Factory on Sunset Boulevard years ago, and I remember killing, you know, and at just as hard... Well, I, you know... I, like, I was just saying, I like to hear him talk like that. Well, yeah, I, just objectively yeah. speaking, Hell that's yeah. what happened. And I, it was very early on in my career, so I, I probably wasn't that good, but which is even more to, to how... <laughs> how explosive the audience was <laughs> but because they they given it up for somebody who probably wasn't very good at the time See? he has to ruin it i love this this is but sometimes you know when you're not as good you kill harder mm-hmm. no, because your I- material is easier yeah I, I i did a gig just recently just it was a 55 and over you know those communities that everybody's yeah. 55 and over, except really everybody's 70 you know mm-hmm. and for whatever reason they, they're just not sophisticated in terms of, co- they want it as easy as possible. Mm-hmm. The, the joke that worked the very best of all my jokes. I mean, I have jokes. You know, the, I I didn't do the, the the banana joke was too dirty. Oh people, no, that age what? group. But 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 I kept it pretty clean. But the joke that worked the best was a joke I wrote about a year or two into comedy. The joke was, you know, you take a woman out to dinner in New York City, they order the most expensive thing on the menu. Happened to me just last week. The girl orders a Big Mac. <laughs> that was one of the first jokes. You don't have to laugh. I acknowledge it's an easy one. Um, <laughs> it was one of my first jokes I ever wrote. It's a joke that I think pretty much any comedian mm-hmm. or any fifth grader could write. But that was the joke that, <laughs> you know, let's be honest about it. It's not a great joke. Um, but I knew it would work. Yeah. Because it was just that kind of audience. And so... Did they stand up and carry you out? Well, on it wasn't shoulder? quite at that level, but that was a joke that got the biggest laugh. Yeah, yeah. Of all my, I mean, I have jokes that all the other comics are like, "Oh my God, that I love that joke about this," and 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 they didn't do that well. Yeah, you know, but some audiences just did they like the weed joke, the uh, Colorado joke? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, but, good. But That's not a like, good joke. Yeah, but not um, not as much as the McDonald's joke. Wow. You know, and they also just like sometimes they just like a a, a setup. Yeah. Uh, because they just you bring up a funny idea, you know, you bring up uh, and they'll laugh more than the actual punchline. Yeah. So that's an example of sometimes you actually kill harder when you're newer. What, did you do the um, the meditation teacher joke? Oh no, I, I forgot about that. I didn't do that. The, my biggest fear sometimes is there is a level of there is a level of praise that you don't want, and by that I mean whenever a person who is not great with English. English is maybe oh. a third language for them. And they say, oh, I really enjoyed your set. And you go, I, you, you kind of have to have a good grasp on language and right. the flexibility of it. To yeah, that's interesting. So, you're, so if they enjoy it, then it was really basic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you're just, you're like, oh, okay. Or but, some- but you're gauging their language, linguistic ability from how they talk to you. But sometimes people understand far better than they Ooh. speak. Or even so, it's, it could like, well be that they understand perfectly, but are incapable of expressing it with the same, you know. Okay, the same all right, I, I feel better now. Yeah, you never that, want someone uh, to be like, "Oh, I didn't understand the word." In fact, it, but it's you look usually funny. the case with a second language is that comprehension is typically better than elocution. Oh wow! Yeah, I think, I think that's, I think I think that's, think that's typically that's the case. I do. I think I think that's certainly true. Um, I don't know if that's true with the first language. I think they're probably both at the same level generally, but with the second language, that I. I that's probably mostly the case. So they, they could well have understood every damn word of it and just couldn't articulate. Who's coming to a comedy show with English being their third language? Well, certainly... Lots uh, of people. Lots of people. I mean, the you know, you you know, um, certainly, the, well, uh, certainly the second language. And, yeah, and second po- language, and possibly okay. possibly the third language, yeah. But wh- I don't... What is that, the third language? Like, you're from Spain. English is your second language. Well, may, maybe it's their second. Well, maybe if someone second. knows... But, but, but the, J- Jay is saying that you know, they they it, they don't have a complete command of it. That, that's so, the point. Because like, so many, I think so many Europeans know three languages. They Fair know enough. they know they know whatever their mother tongue mm-hmm. might be. They know either French or Spanish, whatever's closer. Or even people who know Arabic and then know French and then know some English. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of go. So, some countries, your... like some countries, they always or almost always have two languages to begin with. Like Morocco, they might be French and Arabic. Right. Um, Belgium might they might speak. French and F- Flemish. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of Norwegians also speak Swedish. So they do? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, because 
uh, they're Scandinavian countries. You know, they're kind of associated with each yeah, other. So even a lot of Eastern European countries, they'll be like, well, Russian, and I speak Ukrainian, yeah, Ukrainian and, Russian, and Russian, and English, and English would be my third language. Yeah. So I, I think that's true. That it could well be. Now that doesn't mean they don't speak or understand English quite well. Or they might overestimate, in mm -hmm. some cases, their level of English. But again, they, they, because people grow up with English TV, American TV, um, they, might understand, they, they might be understanding better than you think. I think that that's true. My husband's first language is not English, and he certainly understands. I mean, he speaks quite well, um, but I think he understands... His, his understanding is more sophisticated than I think you would think. Because sometimes I say things or use words where I'm like, do you have any idea what I'm talking about? And does he? Well, I think half the time he's probably just not listening. <laughs> 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 has nothing to do with language. <laughs> um, but yes, he does. Just to pivot a little bit, Perry, I'll mention being on the road, being away from family. Now, J Jay, you're married. Yes. You don't have kids. No. But you are married. Yes. And to what extent, if any, does this affect your ability to go on the road? No, I can go wherever I want. If he wants to come along, that's fine as well. He usually, um, I'm going to Chicago later on this summer, and he'll probably go to that. My husband will only come with me if he's going to have fun in the city. I, w I was at a casino a couple of weeks ago. He was like, I don't want to go. I was like, okay, you don't have to go. Do, do you find perhaps it could be good for a marriage? To, or, or, or is there any positive I, spin you could put oh, on Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think time apart is incredibly helpful for a marriage. Agreed. I think when people get married, they don't become one person. They're still two autonomous beings that happen to cohabitate and build a life together. But they, you do not merge. I would never want him to be like my right hand person for comedy just because of the ins and outs of my professional relationships versus my personal relationships. Like he definitely can be like, oh, what's going on with this show? What's going on with this promotion? What's going on with this interview? What's going on with this meeting? But I never need him to be like, this is your list of things to do. Mm -hmm. And some people really like to mix that shit. Yeah. I don't. What does he do? So he works for a, a fintech company with a bunch of crypto people. So, but he's HR for them, or he's he's senior vice president of people for that company. So he has a job that is very much the opposite yeah. of mine, and I love it. Yeah, I love. Is he? Does he like look at you, your shit and say, "Holy shit, that's so amazing"? Or it's very? He's very like whatever. Well, because we met in a theater department, so he has a performance background, oh. and he's performed before. He's an amazing singer. He's a great actor and a great dancer. But the thing that he enjoys about stand-up is that he gets to be aware of performance and be aware of stand-up but not have to do it. So he's aware of all the ins and outs. He can even, like, help me, like, touch up a joke. He can be like, oh, I like this joke better. I like leading with this one. Or he can even be like, oh, what's that joke you used to do? So he's intimately aware of performance as a medium, but he does not want to do it. Yeah, I know some girlfriends and boyfriends of comedians that they kind of sit there and take notes and... They, they become, they take it upon themselves to sort of be a sounding board. Yeah. And, you know, and so, I mean, they can play that role. I, I, I'd say I, he does, like, he does a little bit of that. But mostly, his favorite thing about stand-up is that he doesn't have to do it, but he's, like, aware of the ins and outs. He doesn't, like, he's a great karaoke singer, and mm. he's fun, but he just doesn't, he never... He's never like one of those people who's like, oh, okay, so this is what we need to do. He's like, oh, this is great. Pierre, where'd you meet uh, Guy again? You, I know you met him. It was originally supposed to be a one-night stand. Correct. Wow. I, I don't recall where you met him. I met him at a wedding in Israel. Okay. Beautiful. His, his, his first uh, he's, 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 he's Israeli, Israeli yeah. He's, he's big, yeah. Um, yeah, I met him at my cousin's wedding. Well, That's good. Weddings are like a particularly, you know, charged place to meet people. Everybody sort of I in that. trash. <laughs> Like I had like I had a yarmulke on and like bikini <laughs> dripping down my face when. <laughs> so your first thought was, well, this is just going to be a physical thing, and I'll never hundred percent. So what turned you around on that? He fell well, in him. love with me. Oh, he <laughs> was the one who I said. Think, I mean, yes. Okay, it was his idea to pursue it further than just yes. one night stand. Isn't it fun when you know to say that? Because so many people lie. They'll be like, no, we both knew. Like Perry, I was like, no, he. He, he, he well, was were like, you horrified at first by, by the thought? Of I the, was a little freaked out. I mean, I thought he was super hot, 
but I had just gotten out of a very long relationship a year earlier. And the last thing in the world I was actually looking for was to get into another one. Um, so I think were it not for him, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, I thought it was going to be like this whirlwind, like, you know, romance in another country for, well, romance maybe is a little bit, um, you know generous. <laughs> Very funny. Okay. So <laughs> Israeli men are one of those groups of like very hot gay guys in new york yeah it's, it's always very funny whenever uh, a woman is like well my husband's israeli because all of my gay friends are like oh, i bet he's so fucking hot yeah he is <laughs> but the, also the straight israeli guys a lot of them there's like a set of them that they're that are also really hot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course no well because... you know for us as jews jay um <laughs> well i'll speak for myself american jews i'll speak for myself <laughs> I, they're hot but there's it's not because there's a it's almost like incestuous um, Jew on Jew. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm saying about? we're a small group of people and we're all like basically fifth cousins. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know, um, there is incestuous quality to I find. I would like to say that he is Sephardic and I am Ashkenazi, so um, that doesn't apply quite here. Yeah. Israeli men are very, very different than Jewish American men. Oftentimes, uh, I mean, I speak Hebrew fluently. Mm -hmm. My mother is Israeli, but even still, there is a quite large cultural divide. Well, I do think, I do think that helps. I do think that helps with the with the with the sexual energy because it's a little less incestuous. But so Jews dating Jews is incestuous. A little bit doesn't mean it's <laughs> it doesn't mean it can't be fun. I mean, so when, <laughs> he's saying if you go far back enough. Like well, you're, if you, you're seven, but you don't have to go that cousins? far back. I mean, like, <laughs> I think I was reading like, like we're all like come from the same, like a thousand years ago, we all come from like the same five people. I mean, something ridiculous. Dan, is that true? But also, it's roughly true. But also, Dan's not saying it's not hot. Yeah, it's not like, hot. It's sexy. He's like, no, no, no. I want no, that to no, be no. It, 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 it's it's um, it can be comforting and it, it just can be can be. I'm fucking speaking for my si fucking your sister. No, but fucking, fucking a distant cousin. <laughs> I, I'm I'm speaking for myself. I can't say that this applies to everybody, uh, but I think it applies to a lot of people. There was an episode, but, you know, like I just did something hotter about about you know, opposites may may not work in the long term, <laughs> but in the short term, there's something spicy about it. There was an episode on Rami about I think he went back to Egypt. Did you did anybody see this? Uh, no. It was no, really which funny one? and. He, that he had a really hot cousin. Oh yes, yes. Um, so are you say, are you attracted to Jewish women? Or yeah, but it, it, so? in a different way. In a different way. It's not the same like sheer sexual. Explosion. I think that with so many. I think that so many hot people now are all over the world. Just in the sense that we have access to global celebrities. That no matter what. Like, we have a per if you're like, oh, uh, who's the hottest person from Israel? You can be like, well, Gal Gadot's like right there. Mm -hmm. She's literally Wonder Woman. Well, the She's thing is, hot. we have people used to only fuck their cousins because when you <laughs> hunt together. Oh, oh, how do we get back here? Well, I'm just saying, hunter gatherers, I mean, everybody, all the only people you knew were the people that were in your group. In your little circle of hunting, oh, gatherers. so I got uh, you. you know they, they weren't. Though you were fucking whoever you were fucking, yeah, it, it was going to be probably a cousin or something. But and, then, but then, and then royalty, we moved into cities. But royalty would fuck their cousins to keep the good blood. Well, they did that in too, the, I guess. Yeah, but doesn't that like make you like if you're reading? No, well, if it's, a, if it's, a, second, like, if it's a second or third cousin, it's okay. I think. I mean, in terms of what you're saying. <laughs> Well, in terms of what I do, it no. In terms of what you're saying, I think it's okay. That could be a good title too. My uh, co my cousin Sheila. Well, that's one of my jokes. Second or third cousin. Um, anyway. Um, no, not anyway. Well, I don't want to make this whole episode about fucking your cousin, which I want to underline. I've never done or thought about. Well, but I'm just saying that. I would, uh, well, we can't say we can't say thought about. You can say never done. Well, I can say both. Okay. I can only prove. I can't even prove. I can't prove either. <laughs> but but um. Do you but I'm have just saying. Back in the day. Do you have female? I certainly cousins? do. Yes, I do. And are they attractive? I can't say that. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. I, I you know, but I, 
I don't think of him that way. He'll be like, you know, yeah, I, I guess. Uh, oh, my goodness. But but I'm just saying back in the day, this yes. is what went on. I believe that. I truly believe that. And it still happens today with, like, Look, the, the Rose Minister Dog Eleanor show. Eleanor Roosevelt and, T- and FDR were, 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 were cousins. True. Though. But distant, I thought. Yeah, but dis- but not so distant that they, did, that they didn't know. Not so distant that they didn't have the same name. Right. What, what, was, she, was she Eleanor Roosevelt before marrying him? No, she wasn't. I think she was. Was she? I don't know. No, I don't think it was that close. Uh, I can look that up. Uh, meanwhile, uh, speaking of... Um, All right, Dan is typing hot cousin speaking of, into speaking his of ha- <laughs> Speaking of hot Jewish women, Roseanne Barr <laughs> uh, was on the Theo Vaughn podcast and apparently said something. Well, you sent it to me. That was insane. Uh, well, I think th- Did I, you see it? I found out uh, later she was trying to make a Point, she was saying, oh, the Holocaust never happened, she, but if it didn't happen, it should have happened. She, I um, think she was trying to be and sarcastic. I, yeah, I guess and she was trying to be sarcastic. It. Or maybe it was taken out of context. These clips. I think she rage. was like imitating what some people say. Theo. She was born Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh, oh wow. Yes, indeed. So this is you learn a lot on this podcast, not just about comedy, but about American history. Wow. Uh, she was born to socialize Anna Rebecca Hall and Elliot Roosevelt. Oh, OK. Uh-oh. Yes, indeed. Uh oh. Uh, her father, she was the niece of Theodore Roosevelt. To her mother, she was a niece of tennis champion. Well, who cares about that? <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, her exact relationship with FDR, I, I can't. Ascertain. This might be an but episode it, it was, for the problem with John Stewart. I know. I <laughs> this would might love, be a problem. I would oh, but this love wasn't a, rare. A you know, running theme this, this of cousin fucker. Well, <laughs> we could certainly go. We could certainly, you know. We, That's we, a good title. Topic we can come back That's to, I suppose. But um, <laughs> hard to promote that special, but cousin fucker <laughs> this summer. <laughs> Coming this summer. Family is great for family reunions. Well, um, Coming this summer. This is a topic it? we can revisit at another time, but I think we've. we've uh, Done enough today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to talk about this submarine? Um, well, I mean, you sent me that Roseanne clip. So okay. Maybe okay, you had some thoughts on it. Well, but, but oh, So the first thing is, is I don't like things taking, taken out of context because I feel like I don't. Uh, there are so many things that you could take off of even this show that if it just that, like it looks like it's like an insane thing to say. Or even what we just had Jocelyn Chian. Yeah. With, with the Malaysian Airlines well, situation. Well, you know, I, yeah, that, that's another example. And yeah, yeah. I, th- But I, this is what I think about that particular clip. I think it is the onus is upon whoever's leading the conversation to interject and make sure that joke continues to be a joke so that, and because you're releasing the clips, just make sure it looks funny enough. You know what I mean? Yes, Like yeah. if someone's joking about the Holocaust, make sure there's a jovial enough spirit yeah. in the room that you're well, tagging the, the, and heightening. The, the thing is, so here's, the comedy seller is the ones who put that video on. No, yes. talking so you, about Roseanne. Well, we're talking about the comedy. Chia, right? No, we're talking no. about Roseanne. Theo put the clip up. Okay, okay. But it's your Oh, it's so, your so Theo... Beca- but analogous to the comedy seller, the comedy seller put up the clip. Yes. So the comedy seller, that was probably a mistake. And I think Noam said his... Well, Noam never approved Noam never that approved clip. It. He said he would not have approved right. that so clip. So if, if there's some context that's missing, whoever's posting the video, that's, if, if it's their show, you would think that, that you would think... So you're saying Theo posted that clip? I'm saying, yeah. Well, it's from his podcast. Right, his but did he person. post somehow? He, somebody could have taken... Someone... Uh, cut it off right. and then there's a longer version of the clip but there's no true explanation okay. that what she's attempting to do is say that uh, people also deny it, the holocaust right there's nothing in if you if you saw the whole episode it wouldn't look any better right it there's not there has to be a tag there has to be a clarification like it's like it's like you saying i don't i've never fucked my cousin never thought about fucking my cousin because we're laughing about this we're having fun mm-hmm. there needs to be just a point of clarification comedically and just kind of tangentially so that an audience member or a listener or a viewer goes oh, okay i see what's going on right well roseanne's a bit a bit out of her mind i guess no yeah. but maybe She's not. I mean, maybe it's not that Roseanne is out of her mind. Maybe it's that the way that that clip. But was he, but 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 Jay's saying that th- there's nothing in the episode. I just think it fell so flat, and yeah. that you have to either pick it up and save it, or just take it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Because it just fucks over every part of 
it messes with you as the host. It messes with the podcast. It messes with people who like were kind of well. It got a lot. Of, it got a lot of clicks, I guess. And so maybe it's, no, it's, but no one looks good in that. Just because something gets no. a lot of clicks, like no, I don't. I don't think Theo looks bad. I mean, he's just he's just giving an interview. I don't. But then if you if you are sitting with someone and they say that. You can't just go. Oh well, you ca- I, I, you as a comic would yeah. make a joke. You would make a you would have a tag. Yeah. You would make sure people are aware that this is a joking moment. Yeah, she says it so flat. Yeah, I, I think that Theo looks a little bit like taken aback. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, is he a stand up Theo? I don't know him. Yeah, really. he, I, I, the uh, name I've heard. He and, was a he was on reality TV and then he did stand up. He has like a Comedy Central thirty and I think he has a Netflix special and he also is primarily in the stand up space. Um particularly I think West Coast based. But he has the ability to make that into a joke where everyone watching Or to at least ask for clarification. Yes. It's his show. Right. It, well, I'm trying to think if she had said that on this show, would I, my response, I guess I just would have said, well, are you saying that seriously? I guess I would have asked yeah. for some sort of clarification. I, I haven't seen the whole episode, so maybe he, you're saying he didn't do that? I'm no, 100% it just never happened. sure that if Roseanne Barr were sitting here saying that the Holocaust never happened, you would certainly not be kicking I, I'm, back and being No, like, oh, I'm just oh, wondering oh. what precisely my response would have been, and it probably just would have been, I, 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 are you saying that seriously? Or are you Apoplectic. or are you saying that as as sort of a a jab at people who think that way? Yeah, and Dan, I think you and Periel would at least be hyper aware. And maybe this is because Theo's relationship with Jewish people isn't as intimate as Roseanne's. But you would be hyper aware of like, okay, let's just so we know. Yeah. It's like my relationship <laughs> yeah, I, with slavery. If someone made a slavery joke, I'd be like, you're fucking crazy. Or are we talking? Are you, are you fucking serious? You would yeah. have to like. Lift it back up. By the way, I have found, as a as a, as a non African American comedian. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm not sure I'm white, but I'm I'm white enough. Um, You're white. Passing. Just mentioning the word slavery, even without joking about it or condoning it, or <laughs> I, I found really fucks with people, and it it just it just I had because I had a joke about. Um, you know, about going back in time and talking to George Washington mm-hmm. and saying, you know, in the future, you know, I don't know how to tell you this, but most people are, you know, a majority of Americans aren't going to, are going to be non-white. And the original punchline was like, wow, really? That, every, that many slaves? <laughs> uh, but, but, th- th- and I'm not making fun of slavery, and I'm not saying slavery is good, <sighs> but I'm, what I'm doing is telling a joke where in slavery is, is part yes. of the punchline. And it just didn't really work. It got, half the time it got gasps. No. So I changed, I, I changed it to another Another way of going about it, but but uh, but there's certain topics that even if you just broach it, and you're not black, um, it can be. I mean, you can do it, yeah. and 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 it's provocative, and you but know. But you also don't like, con- like you don't like. Yeah, I mean, I've gone controversial on. jokes. Like you. Well, don't feel- I don't like jokes where half the time I got to worry that the audience is going to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. and I are in the similar boat in that regard, only because I truly want them to not worry i think once you built up a bit a bit of capital with the audience you can get a little bit yeah. dicier you can have a little bit more if you have a tiny bit of room but like me as as a black person if i did if for some reason i felt like doing 10 minutes of holocaust jokes even if one was good an audience particularly in new york would be like i don't know why you, you don't need to do 10 minutes of it. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's sort of kind of, not to be dismissive of people playing in other areas, but it's like, you got some pretty good stuff you can dig Right, into. right, right. You got some, there's some, there's something that you could discuss. There is, I do think that you have quite a bit more leeway when you're talking about something that is part of your own history or experience. Yeah. Like, and it's different for you to tell a Holocaust joke mm-hmm. than it is... For maybe or, even or Theo yeah. to tell. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, maybe Theo, Theo, Theo might have just been that, he does, that the Holocaust never happened. Well, I doubt no, that. But, <laughs> but Theo also might have just been like, as he said, as as Jay said, his experience. You know, he's just maybe he was just so befuddled and shocked and bewildered and didn't know how to because. I, well, then I don't why know. would you put it out as a clip? Well, I don't know who put it out as a clip. Did he, he or did somebody take, did, take it off line, uh, off YouTube or whatever? No, if it's filmed in your studios and it's posted on your Twitter account and you post the first clip, and people are able to cut any section of it up, that's like, 
I think it's just less than responsible to your podcast, to your career, and to your guest to, like, have shit in. Because, like, every time anyone does a podcast, usually they're like, okay, do you want... Like, a person would be like, do you want this in? Do you want this mm-hmm. out? Like, okay, oh, I don't like the way this, this looks weird. We're hyper aware of stuff like this mm-hmm. now, I think, because we see so many people take shit out of context. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think there's anything we, we've said so far. I but mean, I think I think you're gonna have some new fans, and by that I mean cousin fuckers. Yeah. People well, or like, my co- <laughs> my cousins might be tuning. <laughs> I only have so many, you know. They're not gonna move the needle. But uh, Dan's very hot cousins. Dan's very hot female single cousins. I have uh, yeah, I have cousins, second cousins. I'm gonna be a great uncle. I got uh, congrats. Yeah, you know, Mazel tov. Uh, somebody's fucking your cousin. Well, that's my niece. <laughs> um, but that I don't think you're allowed to do. No, that's that's definitely no, 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 no. That's a no, no. Um, it, but also, there's the we're just jumping back to the to me telling a joke about slavery, or you telling a joke about the yeah. Home. Um, and we're we're within our rights to say anything we want. The question is, in what we, and and right, you know, the same thing we talked about with Jocelyn Chia. To what extent do you want to die on that hill? Yes. To, versus just, you know, and I, and I'm not, I'm. I'm not saying this is a brag. It's not, I don't think it's either here or there. I choose just not to, I don't want to fucking deal with gasps and I don't want to deal with complaints. And I'm not, you know, I just want everybody to be happy. And, and, and in part because, you know, performing here at the Comedy Cellar, these are not all Dan Natterman people. These, yeah. In fact, they're probably no Dan Natterman there people. There are definitely some they're Dan one or Natterman two, people. But most there of them are, are just people Dan that people. that are Comedy Cellar fans or people that wanted to see a comedy show. So if it's all people that like my shit, then I, you can get away with more. Yeah. But so, I think that there are also topics that make people in general inherently uncomfortable. The Holocaust, slavery. I tell rape jokes and the same, you get that same reaction in the audience. So I think that it's a few things going on at it's, once. You know what? I think it's so many contributing factors. As a comic, your job is to also calculate risk versus reward. Mm-hmm. You also, I mean, it's something as simple as like, and Dan, I know you know this. Sometimes you go, holy shit, I really want to tell this very, very funny sex joke. But I'm on the 645 spot on the VU. It's still daylight outside. These people aren't drunk or horny enough for this disgusting although, sex joke. Right. Although... You certainly want to take into account that kind of thing, but I, but my experience is that the the early show they're 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 not squeamish at all. Oh, I, okay. I get more squeamishness on the late shows. I, no, yeah, ten o'clock I get more squeamish. I think the early shows maybe they're more of a thinking people's. Maybe they're a little less drunk and idiots. Oh, that's I don't know. Interesting. But I, I if I'm going to get that kind of response, it's I'm more likely to get it on the ten p.m. Oh, show than on no. the six the six p.m. show. Those guys are great. I haven't had that's that my yet. wheelhouse. Six p.m. <laughs> Broad daylight <laughs> where I do my best shit. Dan likes to do it in the daytime. That's right. I like it. I like afternoon it with, delight. Yeah, I like afternoon delight. <laughs> no, I find the six that's p.m. Good, show here at the oh afternoon that's delight. That's a good title. It is, but it doesn't really. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fun title, but doesn't really have any relevance to the actual special. Oh, that you would have to, it would have to be filmed in the yeah, daytime, and it would have, have to be to obvious know. that I was filming in the right, daytime. Right, yeah. that's true. You know, um, but because well, that would be good if those were if those conditions were met. Right. Not gonna lie, Dan, might have to steal that. <laughs> Someone might have to well, do it. Well, you're well, welcome what to makes, it. What, make, what yeah. makes a great title? Well, uh, one thing that makes a great title is somebody's likely to stumble on it when they're googling. Is is you know? Wh- no, no, no. Stop, stop that for a second, though. What? I'm I'm saying more like, for, yes, of course. Uh, would it make somebody say, "Oh shit, I want to watch that special." Right. Oh, Nate, what about have you? Has this? And also, this, just it's fun and fun. But yeah, mostly. I mean, that, if you're that, from a that, that bu- you remember, right? Something yeah. that feels like, um, oh, that's a great. I mean, it's enticing. Th- yeah, yeah, of course. I mean. I, this is corny. Like, is there anything like in like your the closeness of your l- last name to Nature Man? Do you have any jokes about? I don't have okay. jokes about my last name. Or, All right. Yeah, um, no. So um, I'd say, no, no. listen, I'm not gonna lie. If you were a black comedian, you could call it Damn Natterman. It's just like a damn. Ex- <laughs> oh yeah. Point. But that's uh, but that's also how you. That could be the text message joke. I don't know. What you doing? Yeah, the, baby girl. well, the text message joke we kind of ruled out. Maybe, maybe we should revisit I think it's it. But too complicated. But, but just nobody got it. And like your point is well taken. Maybe if it was written out, they'd get it. But they will. It'll uh, but be, people have taught. You know, if I. 
Oh, what's the? But what's your what's your joke about how you're different in person than you are on text? Yeah, right. What's the what's the the line you say? The line to I say the is uh, is uh, you know, uh, hey baby girl, what you do? you know? Yeah, which is <laughs> <laughs> I think put a sweet ass. If the title was is it sweet ass that you say? Yeah, why don't you shake that sweet ass over here? Yeah, will not you? If you had an album that was like Shake That Sweet Ass Over Here by Dan Natterman, yeah. that's that- funny to me. That's funny. I like shake that sweet ass over here. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not bad. That's not bad that's at not all. Not bad, you know. All or right. even just sweet. We'll ass. put it in the file. Sweet ass is good too. Sweet Sh- ass. How about sweet ass jokes? Yeah, I like that. Sweet ass jokes. That's not bad. Well, because it makes it's fun. It's sexy. Yeah. It's also a fun kind of like uh, difference than like you sweet ass jokes. Who is this cool ass dude? Oh, yeah. He's just a, uh, yeah, and then the the person that you would least likely think would say sweet ass jokes. Yeah. That's not bad. I.e. me uh, or Todd Barry. Um, <laughs> I mean, let's can be honest you, about it. It's probably be just as good for him. Can you uh, use the word ass, though, or uh, will they make you asterisk well, uh, that out? Uh, I think you, if, if you asterisk it. If you the put, sweet asterisk jokes. But also you could be the person. It'd be like, oh, this is naughty. People love something that's a little naughty. Hmm, that's uh, very interesting. Okay, I don't know when exactly I need to come up with a title, but I certainly... That one will go in the file. Sweet ass jokes. Yeah, sweet ass jokes. Sweet joke. ass jokes. Because that's one of my favorite jokes of yours is text message Dan versus real life Dan. Yeah. I'm also like such a nerd, and this is, I feel so grateful to get to perform here as much as I do. There's so many comics who I'm like, oh, I love this one. Oh, holy. You'll like, you'll go downstairs, you'll like, yeah. uh, they'll be like, oh, you, I'm about to light him. And you'll like, see the joke that you love. You'll be like, oh, the, the audience <laughs> doesn't even know how much they're about to enjoy this journey that they're going to go on for the next two minutes. It's so fun to me. You're, the, you're 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 mostly MC or do you? Um, no, I do. Yeah, I, you do both. I, no, I don't. I don't like host it all here. But I whenever am. the hosts are like, I'm about to light up. Oh, okay. And then you come downstairs and you see someone doing their th- one of their closers or like a joke they love or like you kind of walk in in the middle of a bit and you're like, oh, I know exactly which one this is. Right. You know what's coming, but yeah. It's so. Well, much. sometimes as a comic, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, you like that? Well, you pff, you you ain't gonna survive this next <laughs> this next thing. I'm about to beat. You beat you over the head with um but anyway um a- anything else perio we uh we're, r- we're about uh, ready to wrap this up this is fun uh, thank you jay yeah we, was, uh, we had yeah. a good time today um then good. I, uh, who's on next week uh, is it another politically oriented um norman please, finkelstein please hold <laughs> <laughs> zach zimmerman well, we had him on I, i'm one second uh, next week we I'm still figuring out because no might be on a boat or a yacht. Dare I say? He better not be on a submersible. <laughs> he better not be. Um, Stay above the water, gnome. If you're listening to this, gnome. So uh, I actually might run the Fabrizio episode. Okay. But or we'll tape and you and I'll tape one and. Wait for. Wait, wait, wait. Is that Fabrizio, his name? For, Fabrizio. Um, yeah, the SNL guy. No, that's Marcelo. Oh, that's Marcelo. Okay. No, right. Fabrizio. He's from Chile. Oh, right, right. Panama. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have a couple that I haven't run yet. Fabrizio but, yeah. is one of those people, like, and this happens so much now because we are a bit more international, just as a com- just as comedians, you're a bit more aware because of social media. I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And, like, you shake someone's hand, and you're like, oh, it's pretty cool. And then him and Rafi are like yeah, this. I was like, someone from Latin America was like, do you understand yeah. How famous they are! Yeah. I was like, "Wait." You're like, "No, I don't." What? <laughs> They're like, they get like mobbed. Rafi apparently cannot walk down the street. Yeah. In Brazil. Yeah, yeah. And what about Fabrizio in Chile? I mean, it's the I think it's the same situation. Yeah. It's like it's truly it's wild, right? They come to New York to be left alone. <laughs> it's a re- it's a really interesting um, dynamic that like. To, I, I I imagine quite well, like Gad was like that, you know, the French guy when he came here. Ooh, remember him? No. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, maybe he was here before you got here. Gad yeah. Elmola. Gad Elmola. Yeah, he's a big star in France, and he came here, and nobody knew who the hell he was. But <laughs> he uh, made a TV. And he made a TV show, show it, about though. the fact that nobody knew. Who uh, was. It was funny. a Netflix show called Big in France. Very it's funny. funny. It, the show's funny too. Um, yeah, you know, um, playing on the theme that he's in nobody here, but he was big over there. I said that I thought it was a relatively brave thing to do, and Dan got re- re- irate. No, I didn't get irate. He said it was ridiculous. No, I didn't get irate, but I don't think it's brave. <laughs> I like passionate. 
takes on things. I this is this is my opinion. I think that right now so much of like comedy and podcasting is people kind of being self-congratulatory and masturbatory to each other. It's like, oh, you're so amazing. Oh, you're so amazing. So then whenever an exchange like that happens, yeah. when it's like, Dan got irate, and you're like, I didn't get irate. I just don't think it's brave. Yeah. That, to me, used to be so fun to watch. And now everyone just sucks each other's Well, dicks. finally somebody gets it. Yeah. You're and not going to get too much of uh, self-congratulatory uh, over here. Right? But, like, I just, I don't love the fact that everyone's like, oh, like, we all love each other. I like a little bit of spice, a little bit of tension. Have a little well, bit of backbone, somebody. Well, you can only do that with, like, if, if a big star came in here. Like, <laughs> no, no offense to you. Um, <laughs> Thank no, but you, like, Dan. Uh, 100%. Then, you know, it would be hard for me to do that unless I had some real relationship with this person. That was, you know, like Howard Stern on his show. He's a big star, so he can do that with other big stars. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, when the power differential and when the fame differential is significant, it's very tough for me, would be very tough for me to, to, to be at all real with a big, big name on this something. show. If, uh, if, if, if John Stewart was on this show, I'd be hard-pressed to say, what the fuck are you talking about? No, I think... Even if I thought that, I, I think you'd it'd be, be almost impossible. I think you'd be real with uh, John? No, I would not. No, I'd be, <laughs> I, would just, I would just nod my head and say, uh, oh, good point, good point. Uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, you know, you I, can't I just don't fake... Have... No, 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 no. I see it every single but, week. But, you... Have well, I may zero not, ability to be well, but fake, I, but I'm not going to. I'm. I'm not. I might just not involve myself in the conversation, but I'm not going to say if somebody says something I don't agree with. I'm just not going to say it. I you know, I was back. I mean, I was backstage with Louie, and he mentioned like we were talking about a TV show that he he didn't like, and I really liked, and I didn't. I didn't push the point. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it was a relatively minor thing about a TV, TV show. show. I'm not gonna get involved with what TV show it was. Ooh. But 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 I and you know we I just like I, I just it, the differential is I feel it. You know when the when the when the fame differential is big enough, I think, it affects me. I think that's it's, a you know good point. But also I grew up watching Tough Crowd and watching Last Comic Standing and, and like when Comedy Central first had roast. So I'm also of the belief that peers. As long as that star differential isn't too great, peers should be able to shoot the shit and like truly. Well, like maybe I could have, and maybe it would have been well received. I just felt I, I tend to feel that yeah differential, I, and I, and and so you know, typically downstairs we have a lot of famous people come in here. I don't typically don't engage them. Uh, I just don't. It's it's not as fun for me as as having as talking to somebody that I can really talk with. Yeah. Well, it's, um, I mean, and it, maybe it's all in my head, but it's yeah, it it's real. That's also good. I'm not gonna though. say but fucking Ray That's to Ray Romano. I'm not gonna just say, dude, what the fuck you? <laughs> fuck you talking about? I don't think anyone's <laughs> asking you to say to Ray Romano. What the fuck are you talking about, Ray Romano? But I think they talk about like 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 Arnold, like from, Willis, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> It no, is, but I like it. I, is all in your head. Well, it might be, but it's 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 it's. I think, but I think you're so idiosyncratic and so Dan all the time. To Periel's point, is that even if you think you're just kowtowing and being quiet, you're not yeah. because you're like. So what do you mean by that? Well, what I'm not doing <laughs> is 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 overtly kissing their ass. No, you know. But I'm also not behaving with them as I would toward. Toward somebody else, you know, that somebody would that, that I didn't feel that differential as, as greatly with. And it's all, you know, so all in my head. All in my head. Is that <laughs> album? I mean, oh, special yeah, title? It's all in my yeah. Special title? I like that. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Because, yeah, I like that. You got to check and see if anyone's you got to check for that one. I feel. Yeah. All like in somebody my head. else might have. There has done. there might be someone. Yeah, it could be. Not special. A little though. bit Maybe bananas. Album. It's unlikely that somebody's gotten. I, th I still. I'm sorry. I still think a little bit. We know that you. Um, with, with your partial too. Uh, Sweet ass jokes. You can have. You can. Nicole, you, you any can thoughts? Have a butt. You can have some butts. <laughs> oh, that's great. There. Nicole, any thoughts on the special title? I definitely think it has to be something tied to one of your jokes for sure. Like I love sweet ass, mm -hmm. but I think like these random. Things like if someone's searching for your special, they might remember a joke off the top of their head. So they'll be like, "Oh yeah, Dan Natterman, sweet ass text." Like they'll Google or YouTube something like that. So I think it definitely has to be tied to something related. To I, your I, jokes. I like to hear what Nicole has to say because she is a gener she's a millennial. She is I don't know if she's generation. You Gen Z. Z? I'm a millennial. What, okay, but she at the, at the very end, that, she has a finger on the pulse of what the kids want. 
Nicole's a cusp. She's millennial That's Gen Z what I'm cusp. getting at. So she has it both <laughs> both feet in both camps. She knows if she if I feel if if she's into it, then we have something. Yeah, I can ask Nicole. You listen to Olivia Rodrigo? <laughs> Sometimes. See, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. That's this. This is good data. This is very good data. Hilarious. So, um, I guess we'll wrap things up. But thank you, Jay. This was a fun episode. I, I like this. This is fun. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, of course. Thank uh, you for coming, Jay. Where can everybody find you? you? Oh, you can find me on social media at Jay Jordan, J A Y J U R D E N, all one word. That's on all platforms. And I'm on tour this summer. So if you go to my social media, we have a full list of cities, and I'll expand that later this year for 2024. Podcast at ComedyCellar.com. Comments, questions, suggestions. Please tell us what you like, what you don't like, so we can improve things and make the, make the best podcast that we can. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.